Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Roadmaster Direct Connect Base Plate Kit here on a 2020 Lincoln Nautilus. So this is what our base plate kit looks like installed on our vehicle here. We have all of our components have a nice black powder coated finish. We have a removable arm design, which we can show you in a minute. It basically just means that we're not going to have these arms sticking out while we're driving around town and we're not towing our vehicle. So here on the outside of our base plate kit here, you're going to see our easy to access safety chain tabs. Now these are going to work great with these safety cables, either attached to your tow bar or separate. They are a required component for a flat tow setup. And if we look a little bit further in, we're going to have a nice welded on trailer connector mounting bracket. So we can have a nice easy to access location to plug our trailer connector in. And then on the other side, we'll give you a closer view of that. We also have a bracket on a standoff tab attached to the base plate kit that's going to allow us to attach our breakaway switch, which is again another required component for our flat toe setup. So here's the bracket for our breakaway switch here. Now, something I really like about this base plate kit, I've installed quite a few of these and not all of them have provisions for these additional accessories, such as the breakaway switch and the electrical connector. Sometimes you're kind of left on your own to figure out how to mount these. So I really like this option here because it basically comes with everything in one integrated bracket that attaches to either side of the base plate kit. So we obviously have everything hooked up and we're ready to take off down the road. But once we do arrive at our campsite, and we're ready to unhook. We're going to show you now how easy it is to do that as well as to remove the arms here for the base plate kit. So these next couple steps here could vary a little bit depending on what tow bar you're using. Most of them should be pretty much the same. If your arms are locked out, you'd obviously need to release the tension, but everything's pretty straightforward and easy. So once we get everything unhooked, now we're ready to remove our arms here. So I really like the design of these. It's pretty simple. On the side here, we're going to have this little ring here. This is a spring loaded pin attached to that. We simply pull that and then we can rotate it in either direction to remove it. In regards to installing it, same thing. You can twist it either way to lock it into place there. Looks like that safety chain loop is going to hit when we're going this way, but there's no problem rotating it that way. It's easy in and out. Super easy to remove. And as you can see here, with the removable arms removed, we have a nice, clean, hidden install look. Everything is pretty much recessed behind the bumper fascia here. The only thing that does stick out are these tabs here for the safety cables. But this is actually not a bad thing because we don't have to worry about scratching our bumper, trying to hook on our safety cables because they do extend out a little bit. So in regards to tow bar compatibility, the Direct Connect base plate kits here are going to be directly compatible with any of the Roadmaster motorhome mounted tow bars. However, if you have other motorhome mounted tow bars, such as those from Dimco or Blue Ox or even our e-trailer brand, thankfully there is still adapters that allow you to use the Direct Connect base plate kit here on your Nautilus. Now in regards to the installation of the base plate kit here, the base plate kits are sort of involved installation. You know, most of these things, they don't necessarily just bolt on. There are gonna be some modifications required. This one, however, isn't too terrible. There's not a ton of modifications to the vehicle. We do have to drill a couple holes, but we're actually just gonna be enlarging some factory holes that are already present. So as long as you have some time to complete this installation, the patience, and then the correct tools, you should be able to get this done by yourselves at home. So the first step of our installation, we need to open up the hood here on our vehicle. And if we look directly down from there, we're going to see we have a plastic radiator shroud. So we need to go ahead and remove this shroud. In order to do that, we're going to have several of these little push pin fasteners here located throughout this shroud. So we need to go ahead and remove all these. There's quite a few and there's some on each side. We're going to take some sort of pry tool here. We're going to pry the center section of that fastener up. And once we pry that center section up, we should be able to remove it completely. So now we just need to repeat that same process on our remaining push pin fasteners. Now with our fasteners removed, we can take our panel off and set it aside. 
So now once we have that radiator support cover off, if we look directly underneath that, you can see we have several of these torque fasteners here holding the lip of our fascia to the core support. So we're gonna take a T20 Torx bit and we're gonna remove each of these screws here. So now if we come inside to either side of our wheel well here, we're gonna have some more of these push pin fasteners we need to remove. So there's gonna be five on each side. We need to remove those all now on both sides. Again, we'll just pry out the center section and the rest of it should come out as well. So now that we have our fasteners removed on the inside of the wheel well here, we're gonna take the fender trim piece and then we're gonna pry it out. So we're gonna have several of these little clips. About this point here, we're gonna have a little bit more stubborn fastener. In order to get that one out, we're gonna take some sort of trim panel tool. We're gonna to be very careful that we don't damage the paint. But if we peel it back enough, we should be able to see that fastener in there. And just, we're gonna stick our pry tool down in there to try to release it. So now once we have the trim piece peeled back, I'm just gonna take a wadded up paper towel here and wedge it in between the fender and our trim piece so we can get these clips out away from the vehicle. We're gonna have some fabric fender liner here in between the fender and our tire. So we're gonna actually have to fold that back to give us some more room to work because right in this area here, we have three bolts that are attaching the metal fender to our plastic fascia here. So these bolts are all going down like this we're gonna to need to take an eight millimeter socket, preferably on a smaller ratchet because they're kind of hard to get to. And then we're gonna reach up in there and we're gonna remove each of these three bolts. We have these on both sides and they are a little hard to get to, so just be patient and take your time. If you wanna give yourselves more room to work, we could easily just get inside the vehicle here, start it up, and just turn our wheel to the side. As you can see here, I have a lot more room to fit our hand up there. So now we're gonna come underneath the vehicle here and locate our splash guard. So our splash guard is gonna be held on with various different types of fasteners. The first ones we're gonna be removing are these smaller screws here. They have a real small head, and we're gonna take a 5.5 millimeter socket to remove that. And we're gonna have several of these located throughout this panel. So once we have all of our smaller screws removed, we're gonna switch over to a seven millimeter socket. We're gonna have a few of the larger screws in the center here on each side. So now finally, in order to remove the panel, we have two more of the plastic pushpin fasteners that we need to remove. We have one on each side, and these are gonna remove the same way we've been removing the other ones thus far. Just gonna pry the center section out. And then the rest should follow. And now we can go ahead and set this aside. So once we get the splash guard removed, we're gonna have three push pin fasteners on the outside. These are a little bit different than the ones we've been removing. These are just simply gonna pry out all at once. So we'll take our trim panel tool, just free that, then we can pop them out. That's what they look like. And again, we have three on the front here. So now we're ready to remove the fascia. If you have an extra set of hands, that'll certainly help you. But we're gonna start on either side here we're gonna grab a hold of the lower portion of the fascia here, and basically you're just gonna be pulling down and out, just like that. So we need to do that on both sides, and then we'll work our way to the center here, and then we'll remove the fascia, lift it off, and then we're gonna have a few connectors we need to remove next. So before you remove the bumper fascia completely, there are a few connections we need to address. Number one is gonna be on the passenger side here. You're gonna have a rubber hose there that connects to the wiper fluid reservoir. 
So what we did is we just took a pair of vice grips along with some paper towel, pinched that line off, and this is a barbed fitting here. So if you have a pick tool, it'll help, but you can just pull that straight off. Now over on the driver's side, there are a couple other connectors we need to remove. So just the pigtail clips here, we're gonna have one at the top. We're gonna have two down on the inside here, and then another one here. So basically how we remove these, some of them have a red locking tab we need to push outward, and then we just depress that center section and then pull straight out. So the next thing we need to do is we're gonna grab a couple jack stands here because we need to support this lower bracket here for our radiator because we're gonna be removing the two bolts on either side that attach it to the frame. So you can see we have a jack stand place in place on either side of the vehicle here, directly below the support. Then we'll take a 10 millimeter socket and we'll remove the two bolts here on either side. So now the next thing we're gonna do is, so directly above that radiator support bracket, we have part of our frame rail here. So they're kind of hard to see, but on the bottom of this frame rail, we have two existing holes there, one in the front and then one towards the rear there. So these holes are actually gonna protrude to the top as well, but they're not large enough as is. So what we need to do is we need to take a half inch drill bit. We're probably gonna need a pretty long one for this. We have to drill up through the bottom of that hole and then through the top. We may or may not need to move this radiator support bracket, push or pull it out of the way so we can gain access to open up our holes. So I'm just gonna feel underneath there for that hole that's already there. And once we find it, we can begin drilling it out. So now that we have our holes drilled through our frame here, we can actually go ahead and re-secure the radiator support bracket using our factory hardware. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our spacer blocks here that come in our kit here. So you can see we have two of them in position already. We're going to be placing these over the holes that we drilled in the frame earlier. Now for this spacer here, we want to make sure that the offset or the side closest to the end of the block there is going to be facing the front. And for the rear, we want the offset facing the rear. So now once we have our spacers into position here, we can go ahead and take half of our base plate kit here. Make sure you have the correct side, it needs to be oriented like this. But now we can go ahead and slide it into position. It does take a little bit of maneuvering to get it into position. So if you have a hammer, that'll probably help you. But we're just gonna line everything up and just tap it into place. So now we're going to take one of our half inch bolts here, the longer bolts that come in our kit. We're going to make sure that we have a flat washer attached. And we're going to be inserting this through the hole at the top here. So you may have to lift up on the base plate kit here to line everything up. You want to make sure you go through that washer in the top as well. So before we pass the bolt all the way through the bottom here, we're gonna have another spacer that we need to orient in the same direction that we did with the one up here. So once we have our spacer in position, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a half inch flat washer, a half inch split washer, and then we're gonna take our hex nut and thread that on. So now for this hole closer to the rear here, we're gonna be taking a 3 8 inch bolt here with a 3 8 inch flat washer this one is actually gonna come from underneath here. So the hole that we drilled earlier, we're gonna come up, and then try to line that up with the hole in our frame here. And once we get it through, we'll come back with our spacer block here, making sure the offset is facing the right direction. And then we can try to line it up with the hole there in the top of the flange for our base plate. So now that we have our bolt through there, we're gonna go ahead and place on a 3 8 inch flat washer, a 3 8 inch split lock washer, and then our hex nut. Now you may need to clamp this down somehow in order to get that nut started because it is sort of cockeyed. So now if we come to the front of the vehicle here, the top portion of our base plate kit here, you can see we have another oblong hole 
So what I went ahead and did is this little shroud here, there's a couple wiring harness clips here attaching it to that. I went ahead and removed those and I just zip tied it off to the side for now. And then I took a Dremel tool and I just made a little notch here to give us a little bit more room to work. Now the instructions don't say anything about this, but for our particular application, this plastic shroud was blocking our hole there. So in order to give us a little bit more room to work so we could see, I just went ahead and removed that material and zip tied our wire to the side. Now the next thing we're gonna be doing, we're gonna take a half inch drill bit we're gonna be drilling through the face of the bumper support here. So what you wanna do is take some sort of object. We have this little plastic panel and I just stuck it behind this bumper core here. That way when our drill bit goes through, we don't have to worry about damaging the vehicle. Let's go ahead and take our drill bit now and get started drilling our hole. So now that we have our hole drilled, we're gonna take our half inch bolt here, a half inch split lock washer, and then a half inch flat washer. And then we're gonna take some red Loctite, we're gonna put it on the end of our bolt here. Now around the back side of the bumper beam here, we're gonna take our threaded spacer block here. We need to make sure that this is gonna be vertical on the back of the bumper tube, so just like this. We're gonna simply pass our bolt through. We'll take our other hand here and slide the spacer block here with the threads back behind the bumper beam here, and then line everything up, and then we can thread it into position. So now that we have all of our hardware in place, we can go ahead and begin tightening everything down to the specifications and in our instructions. We're gonna start with this half inch bolt here. We're gonna move down to the other half inch bolt, and then finally the 3 8 inch bolt. Now, don't forget for these two lower ones here, we're gonna need to remove the nut and apply some Loctite before we secure those. So now that we have our driver's side on, we're simply gonna repeat these same steps over on the passenger side. So once we have both sides of our base plate secured to the vehicle, the next thing we're gonna be doing is mounting this little cross section here. This is gonna be used to house our bracket for our breakaway switch and our electrical connector. So if we go to put this little cross member into position here, if you noticed earlier, there's actually gonna be two holes on each side of the base plate here. And that's gonna line up with the two holes in the side of the flange for our cross member. But if we just go to mock it up now, you can see that this little shroud here for the intercooler is gonna get in the way. Now our instructions here, they give us two different steps to follow depending on whether or not we have the active air shutters. So if you do have the active air shutters, they're gonna be these little plastic flaps that are down in here. And they're basically gonna open and close and direct airflow to the intercooler. So our particular model doesn't have these active air shutters because you can see here we don't have any louvers in this area. But the instructions don't really call this out. We actually still need to trim this little plastic shroud here regardless of whether or not we have the active air shutters. So you wanna keep that in mind for this step here when you're reading over the instructions. We do have to trim regardless. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So before we start trimming, we're gonna have our ambient air temperature sensor looks like this, this wiring harness. We need to go ahead and remove that from the shroud. So I'm just gonna take a pry tool here. Let's pry that up, being careful not to damage the sensor. Just like that. And then we're gonna have a few more wire clips we need to release here from the shroud. And then we'll just set this off to the side. If you want, you can release the two up here as well. We'll just tuck it back here for now. So now we're ready to start trimming. So basically how we're gonna trim this out is we're gonna come up to this corner here. I'm gonna make a straight cut all the way across. And then we're basically just gonna be trimming this little angle here, this 90 degree section. We're just gonna follow this molding already on this panel, trim that all out all the way across over and then up to this corner here. So we're basically just gonna removing that outer section of the shroud all the way around. So you can probably get this done with a set of tin snips or maybe some heavy duty shears, or if you have a Dremel tool, that'll work as well. So 
So now that we have our first cut made there around the perimeter of the shroud, we're going to take our crossbeam section here and go ahead and test fit it again. So it looks like we're still getting hung up here on these little flabs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to take some more out of the shroud just like so. Now we'll take our cross section again and test fit. And there we go. Now we have it into position and we're ready to bolt it on. So inside this little pocket here, we have this little foam piece. You're gonna need to take that out. There's one on each side. You just simply pull them down, little rip at the top there. But now we can take the cross beam section. These two prongs here are gonna be over on the driver's side. So we'll just simply set it into position and bolt it into place with the hardware that comes in our kit. Now we'll level the cross member here and we'll tighten and torque our hardware to the specifications and in our instructions. Now we're going to go ahead and reattach our ambient temperature sensor. We're going to be able to reuse all but one of the existing clips. This one at the bottom here, we cut the attachment point for that off so we won't be using it. I'm going to be careful to just trim that off and we'll attach it to the two holes that we removed it from and tuck our wire behind the cross beam just like that and if we want we can come back with another zip tie here just as an extra measure of security so now we're ready to trim our bumper here to make clearance for the base plate tabs so we're going to put the bumper on its face here make sure you have a nice padded surface so we don't have any scratches to the paint but if we look inside the bumper here, we're gonna be focusing on this lower section here. We have our main grill up here. Here's the lower section where our arms are gonna come out of. So what we need to do is we're gonna be working on either side. I do like to point out there's a couple different variances between the lower sections of these front bumpers. Yours may look a little bit different. It may have some mesh and you may or may not have these sensors here. But for our particular model here, we're basically just going to be trimming this little section here on both sides. This sort of follows the lines and the molding of the front bumper. And then we're going to be trimming this directly before that attachment line there. So we're going to go ahead and trim these sections out now and then test fit our bumper to make sure everything fits. So now once we have everything tightened up, we can go ahead and reinstall our front bumper fascia in the reverse order that we removed it. And that's going to do it today for our look and installation of the Roadmaster Direct Connect Base Plate Kit here on a 2020 Lincoln Nautilus.